Hello, here is an incredible game played between uh, two legendary uh, Go players of Japan, Shochi Kun and Kato Masao, who were really dominating the professional Go scene in the 80s and 90s. And this game is particularly interesting because there were, uh, first of all, over 300 moves, played uh, lots of captures, both by black and white, and in the end, white managed to win by uh, a very small margin of one point and a half. The Komi back then was just five and a half. So this is a title match, it was played in two days and there are lots of really spectacular tactics going on. Uh, the highlight of this game, uh, it's a capturing race in the top where Black managed to kill a really large group but in the process uh, White cut off a tail of a group and then kept capturing stones uh, because Black was really short on liberties in this kind of race so he had to give up a lot to capture the large group in the top area and in the end that cost black the game but well there are lots of other incredible sequences to, to go over so this is going to be a uh, pretty much a replay of the game with some ideas and a few insights and a little bit of an ai input but not that much as you would probably expect so let's get into it and have a look so first of all, we have a Fuseki where uh, Black plays a star point and then a Shimari. This used to be very popular back in the day and it's actually still playable nowadays. We often see that uh, and also the, the facing Komoku on the left side for white. Now, back in the day, uh, splitting the right side like this to prevent Black's extension to the middle of the side used to be pretty much the only move, but nowadays it kind of became extinct. So the options that the AI consider here are usually the Sun Sun Invasion. This is played a lot both by uh, AI and top professionals and not only. Um, other options like a fancy move can be 04. This is something that uh, AlphaGo would do right away. And also the approach on the outside at 017. It's really common. And the inside approach at R14. This was also very popular um, before the AI era. To play R14 instead of R10. So we don't see too much R10 nowadays. But so far so good. Now Black could decide to attack from the lower side. Coming from R8 or attack from the top. But he's not really sure which side he wants to develop more. So right now he's just playing away. And he may decide later. Now approaching low is something that we often see nowadays too. It's very common. Of course Black could also play the Aikakari and back in the 80s this was played more often than the low approach but it's also a matter of style or taste now white plays a tight pincer and usually here black will just split simply go out e5 of course it's possible to play e4 or e6 there are lots of josekis and one can always study these josekis checking the joseki dictionary so black comes out white goes on the fourth line and now black pincers from the bottom so this already shows some fighting spirit um, one of the variations that I often see uh, suggested by the AI is to push several times here and then counter pincer. So this is quite simple actually, but it gives white territory on the bottom side and white is very comfortable to get ahead on the forward line. So for many players it's difficult to think about a way to use that thickness uh, towards the middle later on. Therefore, uh, some players are reluctant to push along and then go for a pincer. But playing a move like h4, black is actually stressing the idea of uh, Moyo on the bottom side, so then he can attack at r8. And of course white will separate, then black comes out between the groups. And this is a common move, but before playing this Kosumi, uh, white could think about Kosumi Tsuke in the corner. Black descends most of the time, and now when white plays the Kosumi to come out between the groups, black will just extend or a base on the left side and why can think of a pincer on the bottom like l4 or k4 so this is a pretty basic joseki here actually but white went out right away uh, now black attaches in the corner this is a key point so far the game is like 50 50 ane then descent okay then there's a key point here d4 where black has to connect with the bamboo connection now here white uh, played the pincer so because obviously he's strong at uh, f4 and he wants to 
put pressure on this h4 make it thin but white can also block the left side at c7 and then um try to attack more severe this lower left corner but actually that move will come pretty soon so we have a pincer black found a very interesting move here this uh, e2 threatening the cut at d2 and also stressing the cutting point at uh, e4 let's see how the fight develops normally black could uh, just go out with a kosumi without trying other moves and leave the turn in the corner at b2 but having nine hours time uh, thinking each so usually these games are played in two days uh, gives you time to work on all the details in a local fight so the top players can come up with uh, moves like this and they just feel incredible many times and now when black jumps at g2 he's actually looking to push at cut at e4 so if white surrounds here black will push and cut and go for the capture in the corner and this way we see why e2 combined with g2 works just fine so white played the double up to keep connected and then black comes out so playing these exchanges e2 and g2 um, takes away white's base so this group the g6 group it's also going to run so they started to fight right away now here black could play the bump but then white will go up and black needs a bamboo connection to connect therefore he connects right away he doesn't want to uh, give white forcey moves to make him stronger But white found a way to push black into an empty triangle formation. Now white blocks the left side in order to um, take away the base for this e6 and start a, a chase for on, on that group too. Black comes out obviously. White plays a Kosumi. With this Kosumi he's threatening to surround the bottom group. So if black jumps on the left like this or Kema, white can push and then play a Kema himself. To surround the bottom uh, group so black played this move first uh threatening a cut and actually this move is also helping the group on the left side against the hane at e8 so here white connects black connects so this move f6 actually induces the j4 defense and white protects the left side here white could just jump to space jump is good enough because black's group is still kind of thin and needs to run out but playing the Hane will put more pressure on the group and like this white tries to build the territory on the fifth line. So black pushes along, simply get ahead and then jump out. Now here there's a little bit of RG but we will see later with G8 and the Ko. But right now white also has to come in the middle. So white goes this way. Hane it's a natural block here, white pulls back and black defends. Uh, for white it's quite nice to get K3. So if black plays moves in the center white will uh, pull back because this way white can make a base on the bottom and all of a sudden the k5 group is on the run therefore um, black secures this bottom area and let's see white is trying to plant some magic with this honey so the sequence is pretty much forced black secures the ice and white does the same in the center so black uh, plays a nobi if white just protects against the cut like this, black can leave the position as it is. So playing the Hane is just creating more Aji on the bottom side. And for black this cut is the, the same reason. Black could just catch two stones, but then white will attack here and attack again. White will get uh, Sente in the middle and probably just block this way to continue the chase. So black plays the Atari, comes out. And playing the Atari at K6 is just creating some weaknesses in the in the center. So white might need another move to uh, protect, which will happen later. Ah, with this turn, uh, white is trying to set up a combination of G8 and Ko. So even if the Ko doesn't start right away, there's always uh, this kind of weakness. So black has to be alert and eventually come back and protect against the cut. But it's not going to happen. So first of all, uh, white got rid of the RG with this nobi. Otherwise, black would go out later on. And now, black jumps in the middle. Uh, instead of this jump, black could try a, a key point on the left side to see whether white defends uh, with a bump or an attach from the other side or maybe just this schema. 
this will create some RG and actually it's like insurance of making eye shape on the left side because if black hane and place a hanging connection white needs to keep connected under and black can uh, create a second eye so that's an option but i mean it's more like a probe to place c9 white defense and then attach in the corner this is a move that ai considers a lot uh, it's similar to the playing against the chinese fuseki but back in the 80s people weren't that uh, aggressive or so keen to play this kind of tsuke in the corner it's uh, usually more like an approach one way or the other so that would have been an option because with the jump at g12 white is very happy to enclose a lot on the left side so white attach then black is leaning on white stones but in the end white got to enclose the entire left side well later on we will see some invasion there and it, it becomes really crazy but for now white got the whole potential to to be like 30 points on the left side easily or even more so now we have uh, this kind of tactic where uh, black plays the atari from behind sacrifices a stone just to get stronger and now the connection in the top in order to set up the moyo so white it's uh settled on the left side the group on the bottom it's safe too uh right now the position is still pretty even so white comes inside with this n17 move it's good to remember this move if white plays o17 he's far away from the wall and black might pincer and then build a lot in the top like this huge more but white comes inside so if uh, black attacks from the left white can slide and now the moyo it's a bit smaller therefore black attacks from the right this p17 it's a good way to block and secure the corner and push white uh, weak stone towards the wall then another big point is r13 so the formation looks quite ideal to have a kosumi and an ogema with a hoshi and this can also kind of force um uh, white to extend for a base but r10 is still okay for now <clears throat> because white is strong in the center and now white got two very good forcey moves in order to reinforce the top and reduce all the black uh, influence from from that wall in the top so far it's still kind of peaceful this is a probe to see whether black will resist to go out or cut one way or the other so for example if uh, black cuts this way it's a little bit greedy and white will play atari and another atari so white is happy to sacrifice and get stronger in the middle then when white extends towards the corner there's a lot of potential in the center for getting some territory later on <coughs> now white reinforces the top again uh black cuts here to see whether white will uh, atari or connect against the uh, cut well this gives white uh, an empty triangle formation actually too but this way white is quite strong and tries to build the maximum on the left side playing here black will play a nobi uh, sorry a honey or this wedge to threaten the double atari so if white blocks double atari will come and it's quite a disaster so white connects against this uh, atari and uh, the shortage of liberties now with this shoulder hit uh black is trying to surround that group and of course limit his eye shape the wedge and cut in order to get some uh, points in the center here white found a very nice testuji but this is actually a classic one to squeeze so if uh, black plays the double atari white will atari from behind when you catch this stone atari again and then uh, the eye shape it's uh, quite fine in the top so that will help to sacrifice therefore black connects and prevents white's nice move and then black goes for a double atari white comes out that's fine so here if black goes along to capture two stones white will pull back an atari from behind throw in atari again and the shape is just too uh, heavy for black therefore Black captures the stone and fights in order to keep eye shape for the dragon and also try to kill the top. So this fight uh, shows a lot of uh, skill from both players. 
and it's pretty much forced. Black has to cut here, threatening the double Atari and come out in the middle. This is good timing, then escape. Now here white found a pretty nice move to squeeze. So if black connects, white will Atari in center, then there's this cutting point. White doesn't have to worry about the top. Actually white can extract this group and run out. Therefore here, uh, black decided to, to play away and try to mess up the situation on the left side. Because black is also kind of busy with a call that can start at f7 or if uh, white captures some stones in the top, the problem is the entire group is in jeopardy. So with this move, <clears throat> white can save his stones in the middle, but then black can try to leave on the left side like this. Or if uh, white protects, then black will pull back or go down and try to kill the group on the left side. This would be a good trade for black actually. Therefore, white reacts. But white could also react by just playing here. And black still needs to come back and save those stones. So white tries to kill everything, obviously. And black found a pretty nice Tsuji in the corner, uh, trying to take away the liberties for that group and catch some stones. Now the fight here, it's really fierce. So all these moves are forced. Then black is just um, getting some more Aji inside white's uh, territory. With this move, black is trying to set up a call. So if white blocks, this is the call fight. If white captures, black has a local threat to play Atari. And then when white takes here, black will take back the call. And if black captures those stones, it's pretty tough for white. Therefore, white protects this way. So there is no more call. And now black connects under, and we have a situation in the top left corner. And here it can be a call combined with a snapback. So Atari here, if black captures one stone, white takes. Therefore, black has to, to fight a call. But there's a better move. So taking away liberties from the left side. But here black can capture first, which is Atari. White needs to protect. And now finally black decided to connect these stones in the center. Because in case of a big race, a big semi, a capturing race that will start in the middle of the board and the top. Uh, it's good to keep these stones connected and go for a semi with the white group. And this will actually happen in the game. So now we're going to see some really crazy fights. White comes out. Um... This is threatening the cut at P12, obviously, and also trying to surround the entire top side. Black turns and connects against the cut, that's good. White covers and surrounds the group. And now we have a, a little semi going in the top left corner. So, some co fights are about to start. Ah, there's nothing to do on this Atari. If Black connects is in Atari, if black captures a stone in the corner like this, white can attack it from behind and there's no way to connect because of the shortage of liberties. So black took back the call. <clears throat> now, the idea of this call is to cut black in the middle at h12. So we have a local thread, push, uh, take back the call, attack it here. You see uh, black is capturing m2 because if black captures o4, Later on, white will attack again, and this is another quadrat. Taking the two stones, uh, the play at m6 is not going to be sente. So it's very important to uh, take care of the liberties in a co-fight like that. And don't leave your opponent more threats. So that's a connection. So far, so good. Actually, for black in the top, there's only one eye. And black really needs to stay connected at f7 to uh, live with the group. But the problem is, if you play f7, white will push here and then block the corner and there's no eye on the left. And in the top, you need to make an eye around here. So right now, the entire dragon for black looks pretty eyeless. Black went down and this created one eye. Let's see how white will try to kill everything. Oh, he needs to take that stone. Huh? So if you capture... 
Tuck, tuck. Ah, he has to go down. Right, because uh, if white plays here, black can take this stone. Oh no, wait. He needs to take the corner. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Oh, he takes this one. Uh, white plays here. No, he takes the corner one, sorry. And then when white plays here, this one. When this one. Ah, the Atari from the outside is still not an option. So, tuck, tuck, fuck, throw in. Ah, the problem is this Atari. Ah, right, right. So, you cannot kill the corner because you need to defend here. And black can just make the second eye. Yeah, it makes sense to play a19 to force the eye in the corner. So right now black has only one eye at g18, g19. Okay, that's clear. Black turns in the corner to create another eye here, but he has to rely on the co-fight at f7. So white pushes, pushes again, then Hane, Atari, and connect. Now when white uh, black connects here, he's got the second eye, but he's not connected at f7. Therefore, white starts the call at f7. So if white managed to separate here by f fighting and uh, winning the call, white, uh, black has one eye in the top and Y on the left side, which is a complete collapse. Therefore, uh, black has to fight the call. White plays the threat in the top right. If black captures another stone and white goes down, white has enough territory to win. Besides, the group on the right side is in trouble, so black has to answer. White takes the call. And black played this move to force the eye at O16 and go for a semi with the top group. Now here I think white really did a, a tremendous work reading lots of moves ahead and counting liberties and so on. Of course he had the time but uh, you also need the energy to count all that uh, semi. So white connects, black forces the eye, white goes down to make a big one eye in the top. Uh, here black gains some liberties with this kind of capture. And now Han and connect. So luckily, this group is dead. It's only one big eye. This is a move to take away liberties, obviously. And then white went down. When white creates the square here, uh, black has to play inside several times. 3 plus 2 plus 1. So this is an Akade formation. A big one eye. Then black uh, creates some liberties with this move, actually. Because white needs to uh, connect the core then Atari from the outside and capture. So otherwise, uh, if white plays, for example, here, black will take the core and create the second eye. If black creates a second eye, he's not forced to play inside many times to capture the dead group. So now we are going to see a large or a huge semedori going on. So white starts taking, uh, sorry, black removes liberties from the outside, so does uh, white. And white really compensates a lot taking the stones on the outside already white got the tail of the group here and now some stones on the left he will get some stones in the middle and also the ones in the top and in the end white just gains a lot um feeling those liberties in the meantime white also got sentes so this is a pretty big point to probably the the last uh, large point on the board to gain some uh, more territory obviously black invades r8 because black is strong everywhere top and bottom and it's quite easy to go out with that uh, stone now black had to fill the liberties and give the small groups on the outside here in this position black found a very nice move to escape this tesuji so if white connects black covers if atari go out and now black has more liberties to win the capturing race and this is a position where uh, black just sacrificed a couple of stones so he can connect under. White keeps taking profit on the outside. So black played this move. Then black had to capture the stone before playing Atari. Now also this and capture again. If um, black plays here, this is a self Atari. So black needs to take in the corner. White will throw in, and it's the same thing. Black needs to take again. White takes two stones. Black takes one back to buy sometimes. So white needs Atari and take and so on. Now, finally, black has time to play Atari and play inside. White capture a stone. And this is only one liberty uh, capture or difference in the semi for black. 
So I'm really astonished, by the way, White counted everything here when he started feeling the liberties and so on. In the end, it's a really close call. So black captured, and later white has to connect at b18. But it's really spectacular that even after losing all these stones, and overall, uh, black managed to capture more stones than white in this game, uh, white really got a lot of profit taking away the stones on the outside. So now we have small endgame. And that's pretty much it. White won by one and a half. So white connects here. Uh, white could connect the two stones. But this is four points. And the capture in the corner, it's five points. So that's why white connects the corner. And black can capture the two stones. It's one point difference. <clears throat> so it's important during a game to count liberties, to count territory. As the Chinese proverb goes, the one who counts will win. And I'm pretty sure both of them counted, but it's just an impressive game to see. Half board died, over 300 moves, 40 captures for black, 35 captures for white. And in the end, it's still a very close game. White by one and a half. I hope you enjoyed this review and learned lots of tactics from it.